Hello Flash Tube. it is Charlotte from Stitching with the Kids Around. I haven't been on Flash Tube for about nine months, I think. Because every time I've tried, I have distractions like the dog, or we repaint the house, or other things have happened, and it just hasn't been a great time. So today I'm going to do a video all about chatelaines and what whips i have the chatelaines are the one thing that's keeping me going at the moment it's the one thing that's keeping me like insane and say insane it is like mm -hmm. 10 to midnight and i've only just managed to get the chance to do this video now there will be I have a little bit of news and it's quite sad news and you'll hear Rocky in the background but unfortunately those who used to see Toby walk around uh, about four weeks ago he passed away so that's been quite hard it's hard to talk about but that's why I haven't been on for a while and before we thought we'd look like lost him so we didn't come on then so we had about four weeks no four months we had where we were like we might lose him and then unfortunately we did but we did go out and get another little kitty this one is called zach and he was born supposedly on the 16th of december so it makes him about 12 weeks, maybe a bit older. But we don't quite think he's that old. And Toby was a lilac oriental. Whereas Zach is a blue oriental. And they currently have an ornament. Because... Rock, oh! Rocky wants me to shut that. And <laughs> Zach's quite like, nope. So you will hear them arguing in the background so i'm going to start off with what whips i have now this one i started with a few of the girls so there was maggie uh, maggie from coffee break stitches jenny from coffee break stitches she's also on instagram as a steady Steady Stitcher, I think that is. Um, I don't know if Nadine started his. Aileen started his. Tracy Wright started his. So there's quite a few off us and we kissed it ourselves. So it is the Steady. Yeah. The Steady Stitcher and she's fab. So go check her out on Instagram, she's amazing. So this is the dragon, yeah, the dragonfly tile. And this is done on a coffee craft fabric. It's one from her Super Bowl Sundays, which she does. And all I've got so far is a little bit. So not much progress. And I will actually get pictures up of what they will look like. You can tell they're organised today. So it is part of the Bead of Tower series. And if you ever wanted to look at what things look like, the Chatelaine Gallery is the best place. So it will look like that in the end. So that is Chatelaine number one. And there is lots. The second one is in my big bag that my friend Susie made and let's get this one up. So it is on that one. Mm. I'm not doing very well at this because it was meant to be there. Uh 
I cannot find it. Anyway. So this is Egypt Garden. And this one is absolutely amazing. And it's on tea coffee dyed fabric. And this is how far I've got. And it's just going to be so shiny. Like and little fishies are one over one. So currently I'm just going around the border adding these beads. So when I fancy something just easy to stitch on, I grab this and put a few beads in. And I don't think I've got, I do have an image without showing the actual pattern. So this is what the Egypt mandala should look like. So we then have, this is Poison Garden, which will look like This person's doing an amazing job. This is absolutely incredible. But that one really doesn't do it justice. It's really blowing out. And this is on a is how far I've got and I've like picked up a massive massive piece of fabric it's on a 28 count most of mine are on 28 count not all of them but yeah it won't be that big but I just love this fabric and I thought I could quite happily cut that off and use it for smaller so that is what the plan is if I ever get to finish it because I have a lot of chatelines so that is number three and I will be putting away each one because it will just take too long then this is Mine's gone blank. It's not Indian. It's Taj Mahal. So this is my Taj so far. And it is that middle. All the pastel colours are amazing in this one. It's got such a beautiful palette. Which is what drew it to me. Because I love all my pastel colours. So yeah, I absolutely love this one. I need to get the beads next. So that is, let me show you. So that is what it will look like in the end. Lots of pastel -y colors. And it's impossible to stitch at the moment with this little one because he just keeps attacking all the threads. It is currently attacking our bags. Now this is let's go one, two. This is the Art Nouveau Lilies Kaleidoscope. And I'm doing this one for my little girl because her name is Lily. And this is on a crafty kitten. So just a tiny start. 
and there was so much over one that I've made to start on the over one. But yeah, this is like very little start. And I started this one when it was the Queen's funeral. Because what more do you do? You start things for special occasions. Well, not occasions, but events. Then we have... We have Misty Morning Vineyard. And this will look like... It'll look like this. And so far, I have this amount. And this one is like... Hang on. Wait, get off that. This one has like hundreds of parts to it. So I just do a little bit off each part each time I pick it up and hopefully one day it will be finished. And it is definitely one that I do want to get finished no matter what. Then we have... This is the medieval town and it is done on... That was Pitchless Plus. Oh, be able to tell you then. So this is there we go. Medieval Town and Dalit, and I love these for the buildings. And it just reminds me of when I go like places for my mum. We used to always check out like old buildings and go National Trust and places like that in the UK and this is how much I've done so far it's still got loads of backstitch and loads of bees to go in that centre and I absolutely love this one but then again I love all my chatelines they're just Martina had a gift Unfortunately, there's no one like it. But there are hundreds and hundreds of chatelines. So I'm definitely never going to run out. You want me to chop it? Now, this is... This is the Alpine Garden Mandali. That's what it'll look like. And this is how far I've got. He is one over one and he is incredible. But I'm thinking of ripping all this out. Because I use a DMC. And when I've looked at Nadine's, she's got MPIs and they stand out so much better. Like there you can't see any shading. It just looks like a green blob. So when I'm feeling brave, I will rip all that out. And then buy the MPIs. But yeah. And this is one where I couldn't get all of the silks. So I just subbed it. Nobody will be able to tell the difference. And it's now getting stuck my zippers. Now this is one on a crafty kitten fabric. And yeah, crafty kitten spring violets it is 32 count Murano. And I can't know what this is called, which is not a good sound. Oh, 
Ich bin immer noch weit. And if I could remember what it's called, I'd tell you. I should remember. It should be on this. You know the brain fart moments where you go. Or some hydrangea fog. Completely forgot what that's called. I have so many like brain fog moments. There we go, hydrangea fog. And that is what it should look like. And all that middle is outline. It's backstitch. Oh. I hate backstitch, but it will be incredible. And the backstitch is in, if I understand it correctly, this. So it's got a lot of this. And this is the Gloriana Princess Pillay Petite. It will be worth it, it's just bringing myself to actually stitch it and I have gone wrong in that one there I've used the wrong colours but for me it looks actually fine so I'm just gonna leave it so the next one we have is the fairy buckles I've already done the uh, fairy flower mandala I now have the four seasons to do and I've got them all fully kitted, it's just fabric I'm lacking on because I brought this fabric from Kate Sparkly's odd box where she puts all like the stuff where it's a mishap and then found out that the colours she put in, can't get any more. So this will be the Spring Fairy and that's what she'll look like when she's finished and this is how far I've got. And all the face will be one over one and there's bits of one over one in these. Oh, I love these. These top scrolls and all of the balcons are just incredible. And then I finished the winter one. And if I was going to do it again, I'd do it on a dark fabric. Because you lose all these. But yeah, it's this. This centre bit is just incredible. I could literally sit there doing that all day. So yeah, I will start the other ones at some point. And then my last one in this box is one that I'm doing for a friend. And she decided that she could no longer actually stitch it. And she really loves the design, so I said, you know what, just pass it here and I'll stitch it. I really don't mind it. And it is... It's got the mandala. And I started this at the uh, Yorkshire Retreat. This was like a late night start. So there isn't actually that much on there. So it's only a little bit of the centre. But me having little bits as a start is no surprise for anyone who actually knows me. Oi! Me just pile them all in. Push this one to the side. Oh, I got my finger. 
and then get the next lot. And then chuck his food. Um, that is not a start. That is the center of Dennis Mandali. Now we'll quite take a quick sip. I'm not chucking it. He wants me to chuck his toy. It. Do not snatch. Ooh. I thought he was going to knock me coffee over then. So, this one I can never actually say the name of. And it's from that lovely Nadine from Nas X Stitch. It's actually stitching herself. Surprise, surprise, she's favour on than me. Uh, where is it? So it is small Mohammed Asis Oasis and that is what it will look like. And you might find it a little bit hard to see. My fabric is really really dark. And this is what do you mean? On a spark, please. Moonlighting, 32 count linen. I do try to keep it to 28 count, but for some of them, I can get away with it being 32. It just depends how dense the beading is, which on one of them, you'll realise why. Ah, this is one of the new starts that I'm going to have at some point. So that is in that waiting. This one is the Christmas freebie they had years ago. And I'm still same place I have been for a long time. That is one that I actually do intend to actually finish at some point and it's one with the gate and then like four Christmas trees. <clears throat> then we have Mushroom on Fern, which if you go on Lindy Stitch's uh, flash tube, you will actually find a video of that one. Uh, my phone is now deciding it doesn't like me. So it must be on that one. Here we go. So that is what it will look like. Um, this is a 32 count. I know I keep saying I only stitch mine on 28 counts, but because it's in over dyed, it's okay. And that is how far I've got so far. And I'm dreading this, is literally all the way around. <laughs> I will do it in the end. So I'm waiting for it to call my name and then I will work on it. I'm not doing it. No. So cool. He wants to play in the moment I'm filming. 
these are little practice ones which so I have start off one and then start off another one and they are tiny like I think I just need back stitch for that one and some beads and these are the ones that you don't actually see that often um, what are you doing these are the castle bell paws so i started them all on the same piece of fabric what were you eating You're eating something you're not meant to. No, you're not meant to be eating that. So, this is on a random 28 count. And as you can see, they're only tiny. And I only have the paper copies for these. And then we have Oh I'm not on them Next we have the gothic tiles And there's like Laura from the gin stitches doing um all five of them, so you've got one there, one there, one in the middle. So if you brought all four, you got the middle one. And she's doing it on a black. And I've got to admit, it does look incredible. So I'm doing the teal one. And this skein is just on a random 28 count. And they're not that big. So I've done all the border. So it definitely fits on. And then I'm just going back and doing like these corners. And not all of them, not all of them actually call my name. But this one definitely did out of all of them and it's just got like the most incredible metallics. I absolutely love these. These are the silk lame silks. And they are incredible and they're so soft. There's so much fun to stitch with. Then we have mistletoe. Now this is one that got retired and a lovely friend reached out and said is there any possibility we could actually have this one? And she says yep yeah, you can have that one and I can't find it. Small design, so I wonder if it'll be on there. Let's have a look. Missile toe chatelaine. It would help if we can spell. And this is probably why I don't actually uh, do videos at this time. Is that one? No. Hmm. Tell me. I actually can't find it. Hi. Cross stitch. Let's 
No, it's not going to come to me. But if you can find it, it's incredible. I've literally only got a few tiny sticks start on it as well. And um, this is on a 32 count raw linen. And it's just a tiny start of a Christmas tree. But I'm waiting to see what the other girls' theirs looks like. Because Maggie was saying that she didn't like the fabric. And if she could choose again, she would choose different. So I'm very much like, I sit here and wait and see what they come up with. Now, this is one that I brought from my friend Nicola. She stitched it. And then she had most of the silk still left. So I brought it off it and it is... It is this one, the Amazing Lambda Garden Kaleidoscope. And I absolutely love purples. So this one proper like screams my name. And this is a 28 count. Just a normal. Just a normal purple. And it's going to be so sparkly when it's finished. And this is one way I get it out and I love stitching every minute of it. And last time I got it out, I was like, I don't know how to change my fabric. But the more I stitched on it, the more I was like, actually, no, it's perfect. Then we go on to the biggest chatelaine I think I will ever stitch on. Like, it is huge. And this is because I was on the Shetland Wednesday Zoom group that Maggie Kitchy Whips and Amy from... Oh, I forgot her name now. I'm so sorry, Amy. Fiber Arts Amy. Um... Maggie decided to point out this one and I'd looked at it before, loved it and not actually thought, I know, let's actually stitch it. And then the more I looked at it and the more I saw videos off, I was like, actually, this is incredible. And it is the Brock Gardens. And I don't know why. If I do that, if that'll be better. But it is absolutely stunning. And it's got like little motifs within. And they're just, they're absolutely incredible. And like, all the beads for it. And it's stitched on a Spygot 28 count Brittany Lagana in a light grey. And these are my crystals. And then I haven't got all the silks and all the tea treasure braids, but I've got a good amount. I've got enough I've got enough to keep me going. But I am waiting on one colour so that I can continue and that is on back order <laughs> this is how big it is let me move my coffee and I've only spent a few days on this but look at that like it's incredible I actually want to stitch on it now I've got it out. And it's literally got across here another border. And it's just incredible. This is literally going to sparkle like no end. Like look at that. Like the sparkle is unreal. And I did question myself when I picked this fabric. 
I thought, oh, it'll be amazing when it came out. I was like, mm. And when I got this colour in, I was like, oh, God, it's not going to actually, like, stand out. But when I got it all in, and you see it in person, it does stand out. This is definitely one which is going to take me years to actually do. But the end result is going to be incredible. Where I put it, once it's framed, is another issue, but that is for future me to work out. And I can't wait to actually get in and bead it fully and have all little motifs. And yeah, oh, kittens just try to jump. But yeah, that is definitely one to watch out for because it's not one that's going to go down in the corner, it's actually coming out and it's getting worked on. The next one is my Victorian ladies. Now, I've only started one, I think. And these Victorian ladies, they're so ugly, they're pretty. And I've literally only done a little bit. And then one of them where I've never seen anyone actually stitch them. So if I go into the Chasseline website, which is chasseline.de, and that's where you get all your PDFs. So the Victorian ladies. So these are ladies in question. Um, they are so ugly, they're pretty. So you have this lady. Then you have this lady. And then she's the prettiest out of them all. And she's the one I don't think I've got. I have just that lady. And I have this lady. And they are, they are so ugly. But they're actually really pretty. And I like picking out the chasselines where people aren't stitching them. Then this one is what my amazing friend Maggie actually made me. And she made it for my birthday last year. And it actually has inside an embroidered seat. How amazing is that? Now this one I brought because it reminded me of my honeymoon. Let's go back to the gallery. Because I want you to see what I'm actually stitching. Because all these are mainly PDFs and all my PDFs are on what I'm recording. So we have Greek Mandali, where are you? It's got to be in that one. So this is the Greek Mandali. And it's full of all these rich blues. That is the middle. And then it's got like all the important buildings. So yeah, it's got like little owls. Like, how cute is he? So yeah, I literally have the middle. And so far, they look like little aliens. But I stopped because I had a massive like knot and I couldn't get it out and it just frustrated me and I was like, you know what? Put it away, come back to it another day, fix that. And then when you feel like it, actually stitch on it. So yeah, when I stitch on it, I think about my honeymoon. 
then we have tinctorium. I want to eventually stitch all the gardens. So, am I on the right one? I don't think I am. Must be. I think I was. And I came off it. And I don't know why I'd do that. I don't know what my dog's chewing. Yes, I do. There you go. He literally chews anything. Literally anything you can. So this one is done on a black. But I didn't get on with the black. And again, it's got all the pastel -y colours, which I absolutely love. Like most of my rooms are all uh, pastel -y. This is again a Jodry Designs 28 count. And that is as far as I've got. Then we have uh, I know what this is. This is the same fabric as my Baroque Gardens. And again, what drew me to was big buildings. And it is Baltic Sea. And look at the middle. You can literally sit there and just stitch your middles. They're incredible. And she is a big one. And this one actually takes all off this fabric. <laughs> she is big. That is how far I've got. And I started this one at the Chasselain Retreat, not last year, year before. Yeah, I think it was the year before. And I think it's had one stitching session after that. It's like having a kid. My dog is like having a kid in the house. So yeah, I will get back to that one eventually. But it's not on my radar to actually go back to it for a while. Then, I don't think I've started either of these. Actually, I'm out of I'm out telling a lie. Actually, I'm telling a lie. Yes, I am telling a lie. So... I have, yeah, we get a lot of this, this arguing between kitty and doggy. So this is the deep blue sea. And this is on a Fabrics by Crafty Cake called Stormy Sky. It is a linen, a 28 count. And that is how far I've got. And this might have been a retreat new start. Last Chatelaine retreat. Which is in Crewe. We have it at the Witchwood Hotel. And I'm thoroughly looking forward to this year's. So... We then go on to my next one, which is one of the detail series. So let's go to the B detail. So the next one is in this one and it will look. This is the beaded 
Marie Antoinette's Rose Tail. And this is on Georgie Designs Fabric again. And it is on 32 count. And this is what I was on about with the beading. Is if you have a 32 count and it's densely beaded, you will run into issues. Like I did. And I did a little test. I was like, that bead sits nicely. So I continued, did most of the cross stitch on it. And then I got to the middle, started beading. So I'm not an issue. The more and more beads, the more and more we have an issue. So they look slightly dark. And this is how far I've got. All I've got left is the gold going round it. Going round that bit. We have our Jimmy Nilets left. We have Jessica stitches in bits and then we just have some back stitch and the rest of the beads so if i put my mind to it i can actually finish this this year and that was the whole plan up until i got to these and the way it's charted it just didn't look like an algerian eyelet not an algerian eyelet jessica it didn't look at it at all and we tried and tried and we couldn't get it. So my friend Nicola tried. She couldn't work it out. So we then did a favour two options. And I liked this one where the hole was more open. So yeah, that's what I went for. And within like two days, I'd managed to get all them done. And I'd been on it for like weeks trying to figure it out. And I was just like, you know what? I'll put it away, Nicola can have a look at it. We can work something out together. And we did, and I've done them. I hate Jessica's with, oh, they're just, they're not fun for me. And I will pay someone to do my Jessica's. Nicola won't do them all for me. So the next one is, the rose light and there was a few of us at the last Yorkshire retreat and we started the rose tile and I was plodding along and that it's not rose tile rose light but you were screaming at me and I was plodding along and then I made a mistake yeah. So this is Rose Light and it is absolutely beautiful. It's got dragonflies, which I absolutely adore. And he's eating again, something he shouldn't be. And it's just, it's so elegant. So I decided to do this for 100 days of Chasseline which not the one that's been run on the support group, but the one that we do every year to count down to the retreat. And I was plodding along quite happily until I got up here mm. and I went, oh no, this isn't lining up. So I counted down and all this has got to be taken out. So I started it, so I think I got to about there and realised that it wasn't matching up. So yeah. <coughs> I think I'm catching my husband's cold. He's had a man flu. And he's a man. Oh, don't I know he's got man flu because he mentions it all the time. And that's like he's dying. And we've had the kids off, off of school holidays. So yeah, it's been fun. And then my last one 
which I started on Sunday no Saturday night it's now Wednesday about 20 to 1 in the morning so I started because I was like right it's time to start it this is one that I brought the night Toby died well the following day I should say and I went on to the Hade website to buy a chart to cheer myself up and ended up finding that Michelle was doing the sash and she had the blue bell lace mandala mm -hmm. and this is what I decided to start because I was like now's the time so this is a Fabrics by Crafty Kate colorway patient on an even weave again a 32 felt because I'm not too bothered about the beads on this one the beads aren't all crammed in so yeah and then as I was trying to get the border to line up Saturday night I realised that I'd gone wrong they weren't going to match up so I decided to pull it all out to what I thought was there actually I think it was there I pulled it out to and then realised that actually no it was somewhere else so I stitched it all back in and I was like nope still not matching up I realised that that was all correct it was down here it was like there so I had to take I had to take from there all the way to there out and restitch it you can just about see where I'd gone wrong but once it's all framed you're not going to be able to tell so that is literally all the chatelines I'm working on I'm not even going to explain what the dog's up to because he's kidnapped a project bag so they are all my chatelines that I'm working on that I have as a whip so I then go on to a little bit of haul so if you're not into haul and you've made it this far thank you so much for watching and for listening me going blah, 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 blah. and me going through the gallery because i think with chatelaine's you really need to see the overall image and i can't really show you that with the small progress that i actually have and look this is what my friend Aileen brought me Dean's also got one for his is like a green colour. But yeah, so if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I will be going on to haul now. And it's just stuff that I've got over the past couple of weeks. And it was my birthday last week. And Aileen and Dean. Dean from Nasek Stitch brought me this bag because I love project bags and he got me all the bread and he said they couldn't get them all so they substituted and then I got the next one and this one says scary and again all the threads so I'm very, very lucky. I'm lucky to have friends like that. Then I decided to treat myself. Let me scrub. And I got here with some birthday money. And then I'll show you the charts I got. So I decided to get the Spotted Beetle by Nora Corbett. Then this is another Chatelaine. 
romantic ball in Vienna. And again, the women, they've got a charm to them. She definitely couldn't do people. But I just love it. Then, this is what my lovely friend Sam, who runs the Yorkshire Stitches, well, the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Stitcher Retreat, brought me this. And it's come all the way from Natural Market. A little note from Aaron. So yeah, that meant a lot. And there is a story. And if you want to hear the story, you've only got to ask. But not make it public. Then I brought this from a lady who'd brought a stash with her. She got like a shop and she got like X stash and This one is so, so cute. And it's def It's got like that horror look to it. I absolutely love that. Then she had this one. I'm not sure I'll do all that. But I would definitely do the Quakers. Then the berries. We've got the Cricut collection. Very nice indeed. And I just want, I think they'll be really, really cute and fun to do. And they're really small. Then I saw a picture with doing this one. And she's doing like a big video on Chatelaine's and it's incredible and you need to go have a look. And this is Nora Corbett. <laughs> Nora Corbett's June bug. And I just love how bright she is. So I will be doing that at some point. Can you stop attacking my back? That wasn't a horn. Then, what else did I get? There's some finishes in that. I also got some kits. I got Aquamarina by Belly. But that's gone away. I got... From my brother for my birthday, Blossom by Mary Bailey. And if you go to Nasek Stitches video, she actually does a walkthrough of it. And she's the one who enabled me to get it. So, what's that one? What's that? So, I have fabric for the month from Kate Spark, please. And this was the January to February. And I have the 28 count opal linen and it's a lot darker than it's showing up but it is incredible. It's like a pinky purpley colour. So I will definitely find use for that one. Then we have, I brought loads from Coffee Crafts, but, ooh, no, nope, there's more charts. So I have this one. I will definitely be doing that on 40 count at some point. Then at the Yorkshire Retreat, we had Black Cauldron. Black Cauldron Diaries, new kids designs. And this is a 32 cal opal linen called Under the Sea. And it is absolutely incredible. Like it is a lot darker. Like it's not showing the true colour. Like. But it is an incredible colour. And I can definitely see a mermaid going on that one. And I was going to put Aquamarina. But I think a tail would blend. New belly might go well for that one. So we then had a whole lot from Coffee Crafts. And I love Coffee Craft fabrics. And she's actually become reasonably priced. So I have 40 count. This is an even weave. 
Then we have Linen Opal 28 count. Then we have a Even Weave 28 count. Then we have a Linen Opal 32 count. This is incredible. Then we have a Even Weave 40 count. And then this one is my favourite of all of them. And I've actually asked her if she's going to dye any more of this. And I have to take it out. I have to show you, but it's incredible. It's a linen opal in 36 counts. Hopefully it shows. It's not showing. Just how beautiful it actually is. Like you can see the sparkle. But. It's just, it blends so well in person. And I can see a lot of Halloween-y stuff going on this one. It's just, she's like a guilty pleasure, coffee crafts. And because it's not all the stuff you get, she doesn't replicate that much. She has got some in the range that she will. Yeah, but apart from that, I think that's all I've got to show this week. I will actually be doing a whip braid at some point, and I think I'll get like boxes each week and do a couple. Because I have like 300 plus. So, yeah, I've shown you all my chatelines at least, and I've got another one coming. So that will be interesting when that comes. And I've got Kate from Sparkly's doing me a piece of um, Even Weave with my linen. Not sure what I asked for. I think I asked for Even Weave. But I've left that with her. But apart from that, that is literally everything. I will show you another kitten. No, he's very vocal. He's fitting in quite well. The kids absolutely love him. And you can see he's desperate to get down to the dog. Even though he doesn't like the dog fully. Even though he doesn't like the dog fully, he actually tolerates him now. And the first two nights we had him, at night, he was like doing zoomies up and down the bed. And then he'd get onto the top of the wardrobe and then he'd jump on my husband. And he was like, Keep doing that, keep doing that. But yeah, he's fitted in really well. The kids love him. My little girl will just carry him around all day. And he lets him. Just happily lets him. And yeah. He's just a teeny tiny little ball of madness. So yeah, we're very happy with him. He's come at the right time. Because losing Toby was hard. But having him, hopefully, makes it easier. And you never know what you might become the next little star. But he is so cute. But yeah, thank you if you've got this far. And if you want to keep seeing kitten updates, I will do as many as I can. And yeah, alright, thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll be back in the next week or two to continue on with Parade. Bye, have a love. Oh. The other thing before I go is go over and check a new lady to floss you and she's amazing and it's cross stitch mad Sarah and she's just amazing mm -hmm. and hopefully in the future mm -hmm. me and her will do a few stitch alongs. Got one in the pipeline but yeah she knows more about that. Alright thank you for watching and I will see you another time. Bye.